This one's my bike. It's big enough out there. Okay.
Welcome to your Iowa Central Tritons vs. DMAC Bear women's basketball game. You are listening to Hank Ambrose for this matchup. The Tritons go into this game 2-2 two and two and under DMAC with them having a 3-1 start to the season. And I will catch you guys right back off at tip-off.
All righty, and we're up and away as Galway goes up, and it is not won by the Tritons, so Black will start with the ball. Got number 14. That'll be Megan Christopherson for the DMAC Bears tonight as we find it down low in a block. That is something that the Tritons are leading the ICCAC in with six blocks per game. That is blowing every single other team in the conference out of the water. Well, right next to... Right just second to Kirkwood, that is, with four. But everyone else is just having uh, under two blocks per game. So right now, that was Emily Casper's on the line, and she missed both free throws. And a rebound for the Bears. The Bears will drive, and she'll... Hold off on the fast break opportunity and she'll bite on a screen. She dishes out to Jada Powell. Jada Powell shoots it. No good. Steemack retains possession of the ball. You got number 14. That is Megan Christopherson. Megan pushes up and gets stopped by our very own Jordan. The trends are looking good to stop. Uh, really good on defense. We're on the perimeter right now as Jordan gets Art, the Tritons' second block of the game. She'll keep the ball pushing up the court. We got a 0 0 ball game to start off with a minute in. So we pass it down to Carly West. Carly West drives, takes it out to Isabel. Isabel. Finds Galloway. Galloway over the rim and is rebound by number 24 on the Bears. That being Branning. Branning piss dishes out to Jenna and a rebound, Taylor McKinney. Not a whole lot of offensive action to start off. A lot of lack of communication on the Bears side. Trends have looked really good on the perimeter defensively and have stopped them inside with two blocks so far. is Isabel West scores for the Tritons. She's the first point maker for the team so far to start off this matchup with two. And a dish out 12. And 30 will drive down. And a little steal for West as it goes to Galway. And Galway will push it up. Find Carly. Dishes out to Isabel. Isabel for three. No good. And a one-on-two type of fast break as Taylor will try to stop in. Taylor, no good. And the ball will be pushed out of bounds. Despite the slower start on offense, the really interesting thing heading into this matchup is the trains are third in points per game and the Bears are second in conference. The trains averaging 63 points per game and... The Bears averaging up to 75, which is quite the difference. And the three goes for number 14. That is Megan Christopherson. So we got Navia Maestert. She che she's checked in the game. Jordan to Isabel to Navia, passing it down to West. Almost fumble with the ball. She'll drive up and in. She got both the Tritons points for the night. So it'll be 4-3 for the girls. Not a lot of action over round and a little pass. She'll give it up top. She'll pass it around to Jordan. Jordan with a little shimmy and drive as she's stopped by Jordan. Jordan starting off with really, really good defense tonight. And if three flies, and now it's starting to rain for the Bears. That's not good. That's number 30 being Jenna Bohetti for the Bears. As Navia will get it up at the very top of the key. Finds Taylor down. Galloway throws it up, and it goes in. Neck and neck. Not too far of a difference. 6-6 six to six right now. 
as we're just approaching four minutes into this matchup. This matchup will go for, so it'll be four quarters with 10 minutes each. Just pass down to 25, throws it up, no good. So Isabel, at the very top of the key, finds Navia. Navia will shoot for three. And it was a very good decision as she makes it, drains it. That's a third three-pointer of this matchup between both teams. Which, speaking of three-pointers made, the Tritons are leading in three-point field goal percentage in the ICCAC with 34%. This matchup, Navia will drive down and she'll th throw it over to Sharon Titus, who just checked in the game. Titus will hand it off to Navia. Navia shoots it, is no good, but a rebound for West. West shoots it out to Titus. Shy Titus, and it rolls around the rim, bounces out the very top, but no good. All righty, a little shimmy for the Bears point guard. Here goes Megan, passing it to 40. That's Alexi Branning. So finds a way all the way back around Branding. That was excellent ball movement so far with the Bears. That is something they continue to use, the really, really good ball movement, letting everyone eat a little bit of the rock all around the court every single possession, although that one was under the bottom of the rim for that shot. It was Titus, a little floater, and that's off the front of the rim. So a rebound will go to the Bears. The Bears push up the court. This will be Carl. Excuse me. And a three-pointer goes, and it's no good. A lot of the offense so far is relying for the Bears on the three-point shot as they've gotten two to fly, but nothing else so far. Two for seven, that is. As West tries to get in and get dirty, but... It is no good. Lack of communication, just trying to move the ball does not ever work as that is a turnover, which is what the Tritons are actually third in the ICC AC in with 18.3 a game. But otherwise, it has been a pretty interesting start to the matchup so far. I was expecting more higher scoring besides the 6-9 to nine when we're already halfway through the first quarter. This timeout is definitely used for the coach to just get in there and tell him to let's relax a little bit. We're a little too jaggedy, I believe, is what coach is trying to say. Alrighty, and the whistle has been blown, so we are ready to play. Here comes Titus. She'll inbound the ball right to Navia. Navia will kick it up the court. Now let's see how they play here after the timeout. A little more conservative, or if we're going to get right in there trying to score. She pass it around, and it'll be a steal. That was no good from Carly. As Titus gets right back to the defense, going up against... The Bears, here's 14, that's Megan. Megan passing out to 23, that's, Jen, that's Jensen Archibald for two. There's a field goal rather than two for the Bears. 
Good stuff on their end. Pushed it up the court and we're stopped. Lots and lots of outside work trying to fool the Tritons. Oh, a nice cut. That is by 23, that being Jensen. She finds a round. It'll be out of bounds, so the Bears will retain possession. Here comes Megan with the inbound pass. Here's Megan. She's looking and she throws it out on a steal. Great, great, great steal by that was Autumn. As we we're about ready to capitalize, Autumn had dished it off to Navia. Navia will go to the line. No, excuse me. It wasn't a shooting foul. We'll start with Titus with the ball. Tess will go and she'll look and she'll throw it up to West. She calls for a little, what originally thought was a screen, but it was just to hand the ball off. Some ball movement between the top, some between three of the top scorers of this team. Here's West passing it down to Carly. Carly drives after the pump fake and not good. Titus with a nice little rebound type steal. I didn't really see if she got to the ball first or if it was a defender, but she did throw it up and in, so good stuff, good physical play. Now the Bears will work. They'll back up. They're really eyeing those outside perimeter shots. Here comes number five down. That is Shamir Brown. Shamir Brown. Look it around and give it to Lexi Branding. She'll hand it off to Megan. Megan throws it up and it is no good. So the Tritons will get the ball back. Here's McKinney starting with the ball. To her partner in crime, Navia. Navia Meshetter. She'll push it up the court. Here comes Autumn. Autumn. Little jab step. Throw it around to Galloway. Galloway. Just off the side of the backboard. But a rebound for Titus. Titus getting a lot of offensive rebounds today. Good stuff. So that foul will be a no. Not a shooting foul. So... Taylor McKinney will pass it in. Taylor will look and she'll throw it all the way up to the top of the key. That's a riskier pass knowing that she had to go through that whole ocean of players, but it did work out. Otherwise, the shot didn't right there from Titus, but it found its way back to Navia. Navia throws it up. No good. Though Autumn tried to get in there. Here's, and that was Carolyn Snyder's first uh, shot of the night. That being a three-pointer, no good. Here comes Shamir Brown. Looking at the top of the key, we'll give it to Branning. Branning passing it to Carolyn. Branning will go around to Brown. Working through those three players right now. And the foul will be called, so Brown will get two at the line. In the ICCAC, the DMAC Bears are first in free, in free throws made with 55 out of 83 attempted so far. But to start this game, they are 0 for 3 currently. Other than that, 
they are the second highest scoring team in the conference. So, oh no. As the offensive rebound goes back to the Bears. Pass it around, find 30. 30 shoots it. And that'll be wide left. That was Jenna. Jenna. Here's Navia pushing up the court. Navia will find Taylor, but she's stuck in the corner, so she'll have to dish it out to Titus. Titus with just 18 seconds to go. Looking for that final score to get momentum for the last half of the first half. She'll pass it down around to Navia. Navia for three. It's good. Good shot. And sometimes waiting is just the best thing to come as it leads to some magic. So, after the first quarter, there wasn't a lot to take from that in terms of scoring, knowing that both teams are high, high scoring. So, I'm sure it's just getting the gears starting to go, starting to loose them up. And then after a, another quarter or two, I'm sure that there's going to be buckets flying everywhere. But right now, it's a little slow start. Otherwise, the offense is looking really good. Iowa Central has three blocks so far, along with the Bears. Two turnovers not coming from the blocks or steals, as Iowa Central also has one steal so far. That is from Titus when she was down in the paint. So defensively, Iowa Central is looking really, really good, and hopefully they can keep it up for the next few quarters to come. Otherwise, I will get back to you to the start of the second quarter. We're back to start off the second quarter with the Tritons getting the ball first. Here's Jordan with a little jab and she'll push out to Taylor. Taylor who hasn't taken a shot yet this game. A little sloppy pass. I think that was more on miscommunication, but luckily Carly was there to chase it down and get the ball right back, which could have led to a score. We had a five on three where there was three DMAC players that went down for the ball, even though Carly from Iowa Central picked it up. So great hustle by Carly West there. It's too bad that we turned the ball over and couldn't capitalize. I'm sure that that's what this game's going to come down to, capitalization on the turnovers and the blocks. Because despite being two of the top three teams scoring-wise in the conference, we they both have had their fair share of good, good defense. Whether it's came down to Iowa Central's length with the blocks or the steals on d -Max side. Got some substitutions. substitutions right now. We got Carolyn Snyder passing it in to play. 24, pick it up the court, and she'll find 12. 12 being Jada Powell. Powell pass it out to Carolyn. Carolyn. With the dish, almost a steal from Jordan. Oh, shooting. Good, good block out. That was Jada Powell with the pass and the two rebounds, but once again, couldn't get the ball going. And a charge is called. So it'll be back to D Mac. And here's Alexi Branding checked in the game for. Carolyn Snyder. Let's 
DMAC pushes up the court. She'll look and she'll find nothing nowhere because she'll be stalked by Titus. So she'll have to get rid of it to Jensen Archibald. Archibald near the top of the key. Get guarded by Taylor McKinney. Try to avoid McKinney's pickpocket. So they will float it down to 24. Little hop step and score for the Bears. Galloway tried finding a bucket but couldn't get it. So West got in there and got a rebound. And the call will go for Iowa Central. As it's a shooting foul for Isabel West, she'll be at the line. And the second attempt is up and good. Here comes the Bears. Trying to work their match again. Still staying to the outside perimeter, even though it was not working at all by any means in the first quarter. Here comes 40, 40, blocked by Isabel West. There are them blocks that we'll be seeing a lot of tonight. Great defense by Isabel West. Originally got the block and then... Stop 24 from driving down to the basket, and now that'll lead to Iowa Central possession, which is huge in the game of basketball. Here's Titus. Little dish it back. Ping pong action from Titus to, Car to Isabel West. Excuse me. Here's Jordan. Jordan passing out to Isabel. Finds Galloway and McKinney. Floater. It's good. That's an assist from Galloway, and a point scored for Taylor McKinney. It's her ba first basket of the night. And Jensen, great pass all the way down to Lexi Branding from the perimeter. What an assist. As Titus will go and she'll find the shot and miss off the back of the room, so it'll be DMAC ball. Come 24, pushing up the court. She'll look and she'll go to Lexi Branning. Branning dishes out to Jenna. Jenna finds 14, 14 being Megan Christopherson, who was the first basket score for the DMAC Bears on the night, and she did not find anything. So Emily Caspers will be shooting too. And the first one is good. She had the three to start off the game and then had a field goal directly after to start off the, the second quarter. Excuse me. Here comes the second free throw attempt. No good, and Isabel West will get the rebound. As West will drive, and oh, head-on collision. That is the second charge drawn down in near the paint. Goes for the Bears, so the Bears will get the ball right back. And then to follow, Megan will push it up the court. Megan will look. Looking for an ISO on Taylor McKinney. Gets a screen and a block. Great, great defense from Galloway. Galloway blocked it and sent it over to Isabel West, and then they'll find... Titus in the corner and over the rim she'll go over the rainbow almost and the ball will be passed around between the Bears but end up scoring for number 14 Megan Christopherson here's McKinney with the ball McKinney looking at the Titus Titus stuck not a lot of movement on the feet for the Tritons here comes McKinney at the, in the corner and she'll pass it out 
to Titus. Titus throws it up. And they'll call an and one. Excellent. She'll be shooting one. Starting to get a little more physical these last three possessions, if you're going to tell. Just Titus on the first shot. Titus will go up. And she'll sink her free throw. There we go. Tritons are going to need a little bit more of that if we're going to want to keep the lead because they are getting the stops they need for sure, whether it's coming from turnovers on d Max side or if it's just the blocks of the length that the Triton girls have. Very, very excellent. So as we're looking right now, we've got Lexi Branding in the corner. She'll pass it out to Jensen Archibald. Archibald with the drive and the loss of the ball. And the Tritons will look to tri take over. Going to drive Carly in the corner. Find it to Galloway. Galloway passes it all the way around. Another shot that will go over the rim. For the Tritons. The Tritons are putting a little too much extra mustard on the left side of the ring <laughs> so hopefully we can get that under control it could be the distraction of the hand in the face from the DMAC gals but this quarter the energy is definitely picking up whether it came from the hustle from Carly West or just the charges down in the paint the intensity is picking up in the gymnasium Although it being no fan so far, we do get our band and the cheer cheerleading gal, so that is good at least. Now we're checking back to the scoreboard with 4 minutes and 48 seconds left in the first half where the Tritons lead the DMAC Bears 20-15 to 15 with the DMAC getting the ball right back to start to make it a one-possession game for them. They'll push around. They'll find Jensen. Jensen, we got the 24-24 little dance and we'll get Carly West off of her and 24 will score. Here comes Navia. Navia will push it up the court. She'll find Jordan. Jordan. Had a little poke away, but the ball will remain Tritons. Galloway will pull it up, and it'll go in. That is good. That is her first basket of the night. Good shot. Something from Galloway is that she is first in the ICCAC in rebounds per game, averaging 10.8 so far on the season, along with Isabel West in second, averaging 10.5 rebounds per game. which definitely has something to do with the defense that our girls are doing well with the perimeter because right now d is taking a lot of shots on the perimeter. Speaking about perimeter scoring, we got Autumn Dijkstra for three. Great shot. That'll be her first basket of the night. Autumn is someone who is near the top 10 of the three-point scoring for the Tritons, but rather in the conference. So that is a good, good play. Here's another rebound for Galloway. Galloway pushing it to Navia. Navia will look, but is stopped as a play will be called. Trying to settle themselves. Jordan with the isolation. She'll pass it up to Carly West. Carly West. Isolation find Galloway. Galloway stuck on the double team. So Carly will drive left. 
Dish out to Autumn. Autumn. Kicks it back out to Carla West. That'll be for a deep two. For three, excuse me. Which is also her first basket of the night. Nice, nice shot by West. And oh, physical play. No call fouled for Navia as the Bears will get the ball right back. Three on four action is a foul will be called. We'll get two free throws for number 23. That is Jensen Archibald. Here's Archibald on the line. This is not her first time on the line tonight. Previously, she had missed her first two. As the trains are up 10, which is the biggest lead of the night, 27 to 17 with just 226 left in the quarter and the half. Jenton's first one is good. Here comes the second free throw. It is up and good. That'll give her four total points so far to start the first half. As Navia will push up the court. Navia with the little play call. Push it all the way down to Autumn in the near corner. She'll go more central with it. Isabel West calling a little in type of route. And Navia puts her man on a spin move. Isabel stuck in a corner. Do some improv. Here comes Carly, who had just scored for the Tritons. Layup is no good. Good defense. Automatic double team. But it is no good. And Jensen will get the ball right back from both ends of the court. And the shot attempt is no good. That'll be that'll be Isabel West's second rebound on the night. Lots of ball movement going around. And a minute 30 left in the first half as Galloway will score. And a two ball for Jensen Archibald. She's their back-to-back -back scores and a steal. Push down to court, that is Brown. Brown will get in on the box score. That is her first field goal. We got 29-23 Tritons with 58 seconds left to go and a cut. Ah, oh, but Galloway was late to see it. Carly had it drew up perfectly in her mind but the ball could not get to her in time and it Fumbles out of bounds, so we will have a bare possession with 54 seconds left to go in the first half. Here comes Brown. Brown pushing up the court. A little stop. Galloway went for the steal and tripped over herself. Looked like a little rugby type of scrum for the ball. as it will be DMAC possession. It'll start with Jensen for the inbound pass. She's subbed out for Carolyn. Carolyn. We'll look and she'll dish it to Brown right away. Brown will go to Jada Powell. Jada Powell back to Brown in the corner. Number 30, that's Jenna. Jenna for three, no good. Oh, and Carolyn Snyder tried to throw it back in but bounced it off her teammate, Jada Powell. So it'll be Triton possession with 28 seconds left to go in the first half. 29 to 23. McKenney starts with the ball. McKenney pushes up the court. Sees a half court line. See what play we got drawn up to end the half here. here. Comes Autumn with the drive. She gets inside. Excellent at swerving through the lanes. And a very 
Fast, fast possession right here for the girls as the Bears will throw it up and no good, but an offensive rebound, and that will end the half. The half was 31-23 to at the first half with, let's see here, we got Isabel West and Sharon Titus scores, tied with five points in the first half along with Navia Meshetter with six. She had two three-pointers early on in the matchup. And then on the DMAC Bear side, we have Emily Caspers, who has a, a three-pointer, uh, two two-point field goals, and a free throw, making it be an eight points for her. And, yeah, uh, currently, I mean, when we look back at the points per game so far, we would usually say that, well, it's off to a slow start being known that uh, the girls both respectfully either average 63 points per game if it's the Tritons or 75 for the Bears. And right now, with it being 31 to 23, they must have locked down in practice and got the ball security stopped for them. Anyway, I will join you for the start of the second half tonight. I've been Hank Ambrose, and I will see you right back.
And we are just about ready to be back underway way in this Iowa Central Triton versus DMAC Bear matchup. It is the matchup between the fir the top leading score per game in the ICCAC against the second leading score in the ICCAC. That is Isabel West versus Grace Flanagan with 21.3 points per game compared to 20.3 points per game. Uh, Iowa Central has a lot of stars on the team as Navia Galloway is also first in rebounds in the conference with 10.8 along with Isabel West just behind with 10.5 on the average. Um, other than that, we have Isabel West that has the second place in field goal percentage with 57.4% of shots taken. They are automatic swooshes along with first for three-point percentage with 667 that is two out of every three shots taken from beyond the arc. It is a splash. So we will get right back in the action with Taylor McKinney to start off the ball game with 31 to 23, 9 minutes and 50 seconds to go to start off this first half. Here comes McKinney. McKinney will look after the pump, and she'll find Carly West. Carly West with the drive and a little bit of a loose ball so it'll go out of bounds but the last to touch the ball were the Bears so the Tritons will get it right back. McKinney on the inbound pass. We'll look. She'll find Isabel West. Isabel West works her magic and she gets the first bucket of the second half. That's two for West. So Bears will go down the court. Here's Grace. Grace on the drive. Gets a little stop from Carly West. Carly West Nice aggressive play. If the Tritons want to secure their lead, their 10-point lead, they're going to definitely need to contain Grace Flanagan in the second half. That is what they did. That is what they exactly tried to do in the first half, holding her to just eight points so far in this matchup. Addition all the way from Megan. Is it a look to Grace? And Grace will shoot beyond the arc, and it'll be a splash for three. Cuts right in the lead. Just a seven-point lead now. There will be a problem if the Tritons can't stop them. Oh, no, and Galloway's on the floor after the aggressive play. And here comes 14. That's Christofferson. Christofferson bashes it out and finds a way to Grace. Grace for three. Off the... Side of the rim, that is a clunk, so it'll go back to Triton possession. Isabel West to pass it in. And this is a new defensive front for the DMAC Bears. They're playing that full court press right now to start off the second half. And a steal, it's working for them. They got two steals already. Both both transitions turning into Christopherson's, Christopherson's ball as Taylor will get the rebound there. Here comes Isabel West. And the DMAC ladies have their hands up. They stop the Tritons there and a block. Get out of here, says Galloway. That's her second block of the night. And a timeout is called. There's too much miscommunication on the court. Despite the miscommunication, they are looking excellent on defense. This could be the start of their comeback in the second half with that full course press. And the Tritons' last two previous home matchups, they were stuck with teams that did the full court press all game long and it was super tough with them, especially with Nyack. But... We'll see. We'll see if we can prevail and get out of this 2-2 two two game slump right here. For the DMAC girls, I have what I said earlier with Grace Flanagan at second in conference play with 20.3 points per game as Megan Christopherson is third with 18 
points per game in the conference as well. So that is two of the top three scores. That is exactly what's making it so that they're averaging 75 points per game. That is absolutely ridiculous. And Flanagan, who is third in field goal percentage as well with 53.7. Christopherson also has 51 per... 51% for field goal percentage and is fifth in conference. So there's a lot of top five statistics going around between these two teams. This is a big game right now if you want to turn the tables for the conference play to see who can end up in the top two and go to the championship game. Here's Jada Powell on the basket. This is her first of the night. In the first half, right at the end, uh, she tried getting the ball dished back to her, but deflected off of her, and it resulted in a turnover that was one of the big stoppers of the first half right before it closed. Right now it is with 7 minutes and 50 seconds to go left in the matchup. It is 33-28. to 28. It was just a 10-point lead, and the girls are looking like they're about to lose it. Here comes Flanagan. Flanagan passing out to Jada. Jada. Thought about pulling the trigger, but she didn't. She left it for her friend, 14, Christopher and Christopherson, and she missed. Although Jada did get the rebound again and then missed again. Now they're not capitalizing on turnovers, something that Iowa Central didn't do in the first quarter, but turn around in the second. Comes with a nice shot. Jordan Angbreth from two. A little hop step jumper. That's her first basket of the night. Grace, passing over 14, that's Megan. Megan throws it up, no good. Back-to-back -back possessions from no good from beyond the arc. Here's Taylor. Taylor run the point guard right now. They'll find Isabel West, their rock. And a block from Jada Powell. What a block. That is a tone center. Now it's just up to the DMAC Bears to run it up on offense. They have struggled to do so so far, but have looked great on defense. And a wide open shot leads to not a basket. Here it comes what almost looked like a turnover as Grace got in there. She was stuck on a two on one. She stopped the score, but could not get the ball back in return. So we have some substitu substitutions. Sharon Titus has checked in to the matchup. She'll look and she'll pass it over to Navia Galloway. Galloway tried getting to West. Got it stolen from her as West about stole it from Grace. As the Trans will get the ball back, here comes Titus. Titus throws it up to Nevea. Nevea with a little jab and a drive. And an and one opportunity to go. Way to draw the foul and get to the line. At the beginning of the matchup, Nevea Meshetter, Meshetter had a chance had gotten two of our first three-point field goals to go. Is looking very nice on the court right now. She's heating up for sure. That is her ninth point so far in the game. Here comes Megan. She'll push it up the court. And feed it to Lexi Branning. Lexi Branning will find Brown. Brown d dishes it down. As a field goal is missed from 34, and 34 on the Tritons gets the rebound. It's West. Here comes Titus. Titus danced around and got open, but couldn't let it go. As here comes Jensen. Jensen, speed kills, and a pass, although. She's a really, really good passer. She had a highlight play for sure when she was out on the perimeter in the first quarter when she could have maybe taken a three, but... Did a nice little lasso type of looking pass and got a nice assist for, for the night. As Megan Christofferson will be at the line. Just throw it up, no good on the first attempt. The 
Second one is up. Not as good. Well, update on the scoreboard. It's five minutes and 31 seconds left to go in the quarter. 38 to 29, Tritons. Then they've been tugging, a little tug of war on the line for a double digit deficit right now, but they cannot keep it on their side. Here comes Titus. Titus with the little floater pass type deal, but it's deflected, although Galloway recovers, gets back to Navia and finds Titus again at the top of the key. The girls are looking confused. Foul is called, so the Tritons will get the ball back. So Titus will look to pass it in to Navia. Navia passes to Navia as well. She'll find Titus. Titus looks around, finds Autumn. Autumn finds Navia. Four, three. Navia's cooking up. Navia is cooking up. It is not looking good for the Bears right now. That is her 12th point and now brings it to a 12-point lead. I love when numbers match like that. And Isabel West, second rebound in a row for back-to-back -back possessions, that is. And a timeout is called. Or no, excuse me. Yes, a timeout is called. My apologies on that one. I, I thought that it was called and saw the ref blew the whistle, but I believe that it will be going back to the Bears, though. So both teams will talk it over. Right now it's f with 4 minutes and 28 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It is 41 to 29 Tritons. Let's take a look at some of our leading scores. Right now we got Grace Flanagan. At the moment, she has got 11 to my tally. And then we have Nivea Maschetter with 12 currently. Isabel West is having another really, really good game. She's got seven so far with four rebounds. And right now, the trains are already back to what they average for blocks. So if they keep it up, we are going to just... They're going to increase our, their average for the tally sheet. Alrighty, let's see what the teams came to the conclusion here and see if which side will get back to their advantage on the court. Forty will pass it. That there's Brown, Shamir Brown. Look it up. She's been a really, really good type of guard. Oh, here comes Jensen for three, but it's hard off the backboard. And Navia will get the ball as she stops the fast break opportunity. She'll call play. She's sending West and Titus to the left corner of the court, and she'll let Galloway work. Galloway for two. Right over the head of Camry Jones, and that is just automatic. That's her sixth of the night. Well, dishing around to the perimeter right now. She'll look and she'll find Jones as she tries to get her own thing going, and it is blocked by Galloway. but retained by the Bears, so they will get the ball right back. We've got some substitutions right now. Megan Christofferson will be passing the ball in. Megan throws it over to Jenna. Jenna back to Megan. Megan thinking about pulling the trigger, but slides by Navia as she throws it up, and a foul is called. That'll be two opportunities at the line. Uh, 
Avia was poked in the eye, so she'll be subbed out for Taylor McKinney. Right now we got a 14-point lead, which is the biggest it's been since, well, the start of the quarter. First one is up, and it's good. That'll put the Bears back to 30 so far. That's old news for the Tritons. Tritons are in the 40s, 43 to 30 with just 3.29 to go. Although Megan will get both free throws to go. And Titus will start with the ball. Titus up the court. They leave her hanging. She pulls for three, but it's no good. Good idea. Here's Flanagan. Flanagan. Pass down 30. 30 for a three. No good. And it's out of bounds, although it'll stay to the D Max side. She'll look. And a little handoff. She won the ball right back. A little step back. Three, no good. Flanagan, though, will get the rebound and will try to throw it up. No good. Here's Galloway. Galloway, two-on-one opportunity. Besides, it is steeled. Great little poke of the ball. And Megan is everywhere. She's everywhere on the court. She is shooting the three. She is getting the draws, the fouls drawn to her. Where her magic at the line is working tonight so far. Let's see if... The jinx happened. Yes, sir. It did. <laughs> and the second attempt is up, and it's good. Which has her at nine so far, and a timeout is called for the Tritons. They'll talk it over. Little update right now. It is 2.48 left in the third quarter with the score being 43-32. to 32. Alrighty, and we are back to the action after the timeout was called. It'll be Triton ball. Titus will look and... Well, hang on now. She hasn't gotten the ball yet. Alrighty, there we go. And Titus will throw it immediately to Taylor. Taylor with a little behind-the-back drive, a little floater action. And it's good. That is an and-one opportunity from Taylor McKinney. Both teams are looking really good in terms of drawing the fouls so far, where the Tritons have gotten more and one opportunities, although the DMAC Bears have gotten more attempts at the line so far and misses, despite them leading in the conference in free throw percentage. Top of the key and a steal for Galloway. She's everywhere for defense tonight. She may not be getting on the board for points, but it is everywhere for defense. She got three blocks and a steal, at least one steal. As the other one, she it looked like she had one from earlier as well. Carly West from three, no good. Here comes their shooter. That'll be Flanagan. Flanagan stopped at the top of the key so that she'll she so she can call a play against Carly West. Carly West on her and a drive. That'll be stopped until the shot occurred. So she will get two attempts at the line. Now these are almost a gimme with the second 
leading scorer in conference to be at the line. Let's see what she can do. First one, the bank was open, so it's good for Flanagan. The second one, swish. Good stuff. As we got uh, two minutes to go in the third quarter, Carly West will push up the court. Carly will look to find Isabel West. Isabel West down over to Galloway. Galloway, miscommunication from Taylor McKinney between the two, so it went out of bounds, and the Bears will get the possession back. Hopefully, those are the types of turnovers where you got to just let it right by you as they have a 12-point lead really where they need to make their magic happen is to stick with their defensive game plan. It is working where the Bears don't even have – and another block from Galloway. The Bears don't even have half the points they average, and we're about to be headed into the fourth quarter. Matter of fact, we got a minute 38 left to go, 46-34 left in the third quarter. Here comes Megan Christofferson. Christofferson looked to go to Jada Powell. Powell is stuck, so she'll drive and she'll score. She was really tight on defense. She was more of a pass-first looking type, and, uh, type of player, but couldn't find anywhere, so she made something of her own and got it to her in another miscommunication. The ball went low, and Jordan was looking high. And it rolls out of bounds. So here goes the girls on offense. The Bears on offense. As Megan will push up the court. Megan will look to drive. She'll pass it out to Flanagan. Flanagan thought about it. Hesitates and a drive. She'll throw it up and it rolls right in. And now it is just a single, a single digit difference. Eight points. McKinney stopped the top of the key. Here comes Carla West. Carla West with the drive. She throws it up. And the foul's called. Let's see if it's before or during the shot. She will get to the line. As a second attempt is no good as well. As we got 25 getting the rebound. That was Emily Caspers as it goes directly out of bounds once again. So Jordan will pass the ball in. She looks for West. West tried to pickpocket her as Taylor gets free open as she cannot get to the basket. 30 seconds to go. 46-38. Tritons. Left in the third quarter as Megan sees that and does not want the Tritons to score right away. So they are milking the clock a little bit for sure. They got the stool out there waiting. Here comes Megan on the drive. Dishes out to 30. 30 for three. It's good. Five-point deficit. The DMAC Bears are cutting it close. As Taylor will drive, a little pickpocket. Doesn't have, she's got the nice eyes behind the back of her head, and Carly West will throw it up. And is no good to end the third quarter. So to start the fourth quarter, it'll be 46 to 41, heading right in. That last bus, that last three-point basket was made by Jenna Bahati from three, making it a five-point lead only for the Tritons.
and DMAC has lined it up to just where they wanted it. They got that final three-point basket to go. That's why they were milking the clock because after they hit that shot, Tritons had no chance to start it off in their next possession. So right now they start with the possession and a little swat from Galloway. But somehow the ball still retains in play in 30 again. That is Jenna, back-to-back three-point basket. She makes it a two-point possession as the Tritons are falling apart on their perimeter defense, something they were so good at in the first half, first quarter specifically. Here's Galloway trying to make up for the block. She could have had the possession earlier. So that's good for two. As Megan scored for the Bears on that next attempt. It's 48 to 46 with nine minutes to go as Jordan tries to throw it up, but Angbred is just short. Here comes Here comes Flanagan. Flanagan finds number 12, Jada Powell for the assist. And it is good. It is a tie game, ladies and gentlemen. And just like that, it just came from a 14-point possession to a tie game, just like that. As Taylor will find Wes. Wes, a little confusion. Throw it up and be no good. As DMAC will have their first opportunity to take a lead since the first half of the matchup. They have had a lead this whole game. Jada. I believe that was a deep two. It was no good, although Emily Caspers gets the rebound and the point to score. And she gets the Bears in front. As the trains are on a scoring spell, they cannot get to the basket whatsoever. They've only been able to put one field goal up in the last four minutes to go. Here comes Jordan. Jordan passes out to McKinney. McKinney. Finds Galloway. Galloway wants to work. Galloway fade away. No way. Oh, no. Here comes 14-14 being Megan. Megan will drive. Christofferson, no good. Powell, great steal from McKinney. McKinney, what a find. Here comes Carly. Carly West will fight for the ball, and it'll be Iowa Central Possession. It is 48 to 50 with seven minutes and 22 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. As Titus is checked into the ball game for McKinney and Jordan. Navia Meshitter is also checked in the game. She was bumped earlier, and that's when the drought had started. Here comes Galloway for two. She's starting to cook up. Was definitely quiet in the first half. It's 50-50. Here's Jensen. Jensen will look. Find Flanagan. Flanagan at the very top of the key. Dish down to Megan, Megan, back to Flanagan. They're working on that perimeter again. It's just a cost of it starting to work now, and it rolls around, and the ball's no good. And it'll go to Isabel West, who gets the ball back. Isabel will look. Just playing it safe right now, giving to Navia. And something interesting is right as the Bears got the ball, got the points back to 50 to 50, a tie ball game, and even took the lead for a while. They stopped with the full court pressure, which originally was believed to have put them in the slum at the very first quarter.
Here's Titus. Titus will look. Finds Galloway. Galloway at the top of the key. Find Navia. Navia. Navia gets the screen. She'll decide to roll with it. She'll drive, and a foul's called. Oh, no. That is one of the things that the DMAC girls were looking so great at in the first half. They had a lot of charges go for them getting the ball. Is Megan Christofferson push up the court. Megan, screen against Navia. Navia gets right back tight on her. And there's Lexi Branning. Lexi Branning. The ball is being dished around. Touches about just about everyone so far besides Brown. And the ball hits the very front of the rim but flies up in the air and falls. It's a three-point possession. And the I was going to say I would think that would be at least an over the back as it was almost a steal but Megan Christofferson for three again she's heating, heating, heating up getting hot on the court tonight here comes Taylor McKinney McKinney original plan was to go to West she can't make it happen so she'll find Autumn Autumn a little round the world action Gives it back to Isabel. Isabel with the drive, with the Euro, with the score. Looking clean, looking nice. Gets to a one-point lead for the Bears. Zabal will go into here this time in a block. The Bears can't do anything unless the ball is moving well on the outside. The second they get it into the inside is blocked by the girls. It's looking really, really good. Here comes Jordan Engbrett. A little between in the middle, close to the corner, and Isabel West. Let her work. She'll get the rebound. She'll throw it back up, and she'll get to the line. Excellent effort by West. If it's anyone that has to make a amends in the fourth quarter, it has to be her. She's leading the conference in points per game, for goodness sake. Scoreboard update. We've got five minutes and ten seconds left to go in this matchup, with it being 52-53 for the Bears. As West's first attempt is good. She got her tenth point of the night so far. The second one is up, and it's good. It's a swish. And a timeout is called as the Tritons took the lead back. Little game plan exercise, whatever it was that the DMAC girls had at the start of the second half, it definitely worked as it propelled a big comeback. Yes, they got to their lowest low, but brought it back up to their highest high. They even took the lead at one point, but right now are going to have to fight against this little scrap out right now between the Iowa Central Tritons and the DMAC Bears. All righty, and we are halfway through the final quarter to play with Megan Christofferson playing the point guard to push it up the court. She will look to find Powell. Powell will drive, gets the inside pressure. And the defense is not enough for it that time. Their best 
Interior scoring has definitely came from Powell. Absolutely. But on the outside for the Bears, a lot of threes have flown for Christofferson, for Jenna Bohady, especially as the first free throw is good, and along with Flanagan as well. As the rope is cut and dragged back to the bear side with those two attempted free throws good from Powell. Here comes West. West, miscommunication, it looked like. Tried to bring it outside, but couldn't make it work. Here comes Galloway. Mid range game is too strong as she gets it to go down. That is Galloway's 14th bucket of the night. That is all seven being field goals. Here comes Powell. Powell get, tries to get it. But Flanagan has pressure tight. Here's Christofferson. It was almost left hanging at the top of the key, but she'll drive. She'll throw it up, and she will get the foul called for her, so she'll go to the line. This is not her first time at the line. Is her previous attempt... Our previous two attempts, one of them went and the other one did not. In the very, very, very first time from the very first quarter of this matchup, she got him to go. As she shakes her head, she needed that one to go. She can only tie it now. As Christofferson will. So we got 56 to 56 with just four minutes to play. Christofferson with 15 points. She's got the most amount of points so far on the court right now. As the defense is applied and the Tritons are caving. Here comes Flanagan. Flanagan drives. And she'll go to the line for two. The defense looked really, really well, but she is just so used to that's part of her game, just being so comfortable down there driving in the lane. She can manipulate the defense into drawing the foul for her. Flanagan on the line to take the lead. Flanagan up. First one good. The second one will fall as well. So it is 58 Bears, 56 Tritons so far in this matchup. Here comes Navia. Navia will drive. After she gets a screen, she'll dish it out to Autumn. Autumn for three, and it's rolled around. No good, but it doesn't matter anyway because a uh, block is called, I believe. So a charge is called, so it'll be right back to the Bear possession. They are too good with drawing fouls when it comes to on against Iowa Central's offense. I think that is their fourth charge that they've got gone for them. Excellent, excellent job by them tonight. And we've got three minutes and 30 seconds to go in this matchup. 56 to 58. Bears on top. Here comes Powell. Powell will drive. That's their length. No good. As Emily Casper's got the offensive rebound and tried to make it good as well. She's got a handful of rebounds now. She's got three offensive rebounds, but only one attempt has been able to fall for her. She'll dish it out to Carly West. Carly West faked one way, went the other, and was near to get the basket but didn't, and then was near to get the rebound and also didn't. So Christofferson drives up with the ball, and it's, and it's rattled around and back in the hands of Flanagan. Flanagan with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Dished out to Christofferson. Christofferson. She'll look and she'll drive. Those up to Powell. Powell, no good. Christofferson. Those up to Powell. Powell will look and they will go to Emily Caspers. 
which will find number 30 in the corner as shot clock expires. That's where they wanted. She's a shooter for sure, but couldn't get it to go. As a steal is attempted by Caspers. Starting to get physical with two and a half minutes to go. As West will go to West, heading West. And we'll find it to Autumn. Autumn Dijkstra for three. That is her first three-point make of the night. No, excuse me, her second. Her first three-point make of the second half, I should say, which will bring the Triton lead 59-58 to so far. They got it back. Alrighty, let's see how conservative they'll play. Let's see if the Tritons will be the first team to start milking the clock with the lead just passing with the time just passing past the two minute mark. And Galloway in the corner. She throws it up, no good. But Isabel West is too good. She got the rebound. She throws it up, no good. Galloway's got her back. She throws it up and she gets the foul called. So she'll go to the line for the two free throws attempted. Via at the line. First one's up and good. Her first free throw make of the night. The rest of her points being from the field goal range. And second is good as well. So. It'll be 61 to 58 Tritons with a minute and 46 to go left in this matchup. It is getting super close right down to the wire. If you were to ask me if I would have thought it would be close halfway through the third quarter, I'd say no way. It's a 15 point lead for the Tritons and they are doing so well with milking the clock. And then all of a sudden it came down to Jenna shooting the three ball along with her partner in crime. Megan Christofferson for three as well, and they brought her right back down to a three-point lead now currently, but they did have the lead to start off. They never have had a more than one possession lead so far, but I'll tell you what, they are looking good tonight. So DMAC will start with ball. Let's see if they go three ball attempted right away or if they'll stick to the two game as it'll be Megan to start off. Running the point, she goes up. She's going against Carly West. Tried taking a screen, but it was no good as the foul is called, and they are in the bonus, so she will get to the line. She'll shoot two right at the line. Here's Christofferson for the first attempt. It is up, and it rolls out no good. The second one is up, and it's good. Two-point game. They got points out of it. That's what they needed so far. Here's McKinney. As no full-court pressure again. That was working when they were mounting their comeback, so I don't see why they didn't go back to it, especially when the clock is ticking this far away to the end of the matchup. And some miscommunication will keep Iowa Central ball as about went off the hands of Isabel West, but I believe it was deflected by Emily Caspers right before it went out of bounds. Here's McKinney. McKinney will look, and she'll find West, and West will find West, as it will be, and Isabel makes it a two-possession game, 63-59 to with a minute and 12 seconds to go at the end of the game. As a shot is good for three as she hangs the th three fingers up. Jeez. Uh, Jenna 
Bahati is everywhere from the three-point line. She's dotting it up from every single quarter along the perimeter. It is just a one-point game now with a minute and three to go left in the matchup. It's 63-62. to 62. That means that the Iowa Central... No, Iowa Central has not even hit their points per game average yet. And knowing that they're third and the Bears are second in the conference... The Bears are not even close, so if when it's all said and done, the one thing we can definitely say about this matchup is the Tritons came to play on defense. Yes, they had their moments where the Bears could go on the run, but go on a really good run, but against the second team in the conference in terms of offense, this is good, good stuff by the Tritons tonight. Some of your scoring leaders so far tonight. I got Galloway with 16, and I got Isabel West with 13 points on the matchup. On the other end of the court, we got Christofferson with 16, along with Grace Flanagan with 14. And here's the full court pressure. Here's Isabel West looking to pass it in. She'll go Carly West. West to West seems to work each time. One point match. Carly, a little swerving around. Missing the obstacle. Here's Taylor. And we're just at 50 seconds left to go in this matchup. Here's Isabel West. Thought about pulling, but didn't. Isabel stuck, so she'll have to pass it out to Carly. Carly. Steal attempted on her, and they got the ball back. So here comes DMAC Bears, and here's Flanagan. You don't want the ball in the hands of her because she'll find Christopherson. Christopherson, no good. So she'll go to the line again. She's had three opportunities so far to take the lead on the line with it being a one-possession game, and the two times prior, she's been only able to tie it up. So let's see if she takes the lead right here. Megan Christopherson. First one's up, and it's good. We got 32.6 seconds left in this matchup. The second one's up, and it's no good again. She's one of two on each of her last two, her last three, excuse me, trips to the line. As the ball went back in the hands of DMAC. With a tie matchup, 30 seconds left to go. And the foul is called for Powell. So Powell, Jada Powell, will be on the line. There's another opportunity on the line. Coming to factor for the Bears. Powell will look. Too heavy, too much mustard on the first one. Second one will look, and the second make is good. Second attempt is good. So Iowa Central will burn a timeout right now. They need to draw up that play to make a crisp shot, shot happen right here to try and seal it up. Because what they could do is with just 30 seconds left, they could milk the clock down to the near end to give the... Bears have no time to score for their next matchup. But who knows? They could they could go quick. They could absolutely or do something a little sneaky. The perimeter shooting hasn't been amazing tonight. There's only been a few three-pointers so far. Actually, we have more blocks than we do three-pointers made so far in this matchup, which is actually quite remarkable knowing that we have so many so far. Right now, I've counted eight, possibly seven or eight. So we will. So the trains will start on their side of the court with Autumn. She'll throw it over to West, Carly West. Little shimmy shake. She about lost the ball, and she'll get double teamed on. So she'll have to go and find West. West. Oh, look. 
she had the footwork and she had Navia Galloway wide open from three in the corner, but she could not hear the lack of miscommunication. Hopefully that is not the pin to the coffin for this matchup. As Christofferson will go to the line. I like that. I like that a idea of scoring a little bit quicker than normal because if they miss their first and only attempt and had the clock go down to zero, then well, we they wouldn't get a second attempt. But at least here, it'll be at least a two point possession, possibly a three. Here goes right here. So they throw it up, and it's good. Chris. Christopherson went from not clutch to very clutch. Ten seconds to go, nine, eight, and a drive from Carly West. And this is a missed wide open layup. They tried letting it go for him. As Taylor McKinney will go for the steal, and Christopherson will be fouled. So Christopherson will go to the line to put a cap on this match. This has got to be crushing. Iowa Central only had. Excuse me, DMAC Bears only had the time with the lead for not even five minutes in this matchup. As that made free throw, might as well sealed the deal for the Bears. Christopherson will go again. And it's a miss. Ball will go to Iowa Central. Never say never. It is... Still likely, probable, something could happen. Iowa Central with just three seconds left. McKinney will look, and the ball is poked free. Courtesy of Brown, and the DMAC Bears will take this matchup over the Iowa Central Tritons. An absolute stinger of a matchup. Some of the highlights of the match definitely came from Christofferson. She was the one that propelled the comeback when it was a 14-point matchup in the third quarter along with Jenna Bohati, who had four three-pointers three to go for them as well. So excellent, excellent work. Iowa Central Tritons put up another matchup where they had their opponent give up a lot of turnovers despite the Bears already giving up quite a bit of turnovers already. The Iowa Central Tritons had seven blocks to their own name so far. I believe the kisser to the deal was the lack of communication at times in the interior. When they were driving, they could have kicked it out. Maybe that could have led to some missed baskets. But other, overall, the Tritons should be happy. They led the second leading score, the second leading scores in the conference to 10 points lower than what they average. And the Tritons got to what they averaged. So they looked really, really good. It did drop them to 2-3 and three so far on the season and got the DMAC Bears to 4-1. and one, But they were a tough matchup. And the Tritons had the lead for the longest amount of time so far in any of their bouts so far on the season. So maybe more time management can make it so that they can seal the deal for next week. Otherwise, this has been your girl, your women's, college basketball matchup between the Iowa Central Tritons and the DMAC Bears where the DMAC Bears took it to victory over a four point lead over the Tritons. I am Hank Ambrose and I'll be tuning out and catch me back at the boys game at 7 o'clock for our next matchup. <laughs>